I have a fancy sleeper this year. I just want to know if you expect him to go back to his true form or if you think what we've seen from him the last two years is kind of what his new status Do not quo. bring up Baker Mayfield. I'm not really bringing is. up Let's Baker go. Mayfield. I think he's bring up I'm his not teammates. bringing up Baker Mayfield. Do you expect Odell Beckham Jr. to of go course. back to being a true number one wide receiver? Because I've been alone on this show saying that Odell's still by far a top five receiver talent-wise, and I get yelled at for it endlessly. No, he's not. You know who else said that? Jalen freaking Ramsey. I think he knows what he's talking about. Called him the second toughest guard in the freaking league. So I'm with you to an extent. Do I think he's going to be back to a number top five fantasy wide receiver like he was perennially with the Giants? No, that's more of a volume issue. I mean, with the Giants every single year, 10 plus targets per game. 2019, he had 8.3. Last year, even getting rid of the two-snap game in week seven, he was only at seven targets per game. So it's going to be tough for him to completely smash. But like, guess what? We don't have to draft him as the guy expected to completely smash anymore. Last year, Beckham was going as the wide receiver 12 in full PPR leagues. Right now, he's going as the wide receiver 27. Mm. I know he hasn't been great in Cleveland, but 2019, he was a wide receiver 25. Before he got hurt last year, he was a wide receiver 19. Like, unless this injury, which everything we've heard, again, he's progressing fine. You know, people are saying he looks better than ever. It saves a lot, but I'm not not believing him, you know. So I think with uh, the injury being the only problem, like, I'm fine taking that discount because we still haven't seen the best version of Baker and OBJ together. And I refuse to believe that putting OBJ in any offense makes it work. And I did a study to try to help show this. And one of the cool things I found, Baker, who's played, you know, nine or 10 games without OBJ over the past two years. He has averaged 0.6 more yards per attempt without Beckham on the field. Patrick Mahomes has played eight games without Tyreek Hill over the years. He's averaged 0.6 more yards per attempt per game without Tyreek Hill on the field. Now, would anyone in their right mind try to say the Chiefs are better off without Tyreek Hill? No. No. So stop saying it about Odell Beckham as well. Thank you, sir. You're my new favorite guest. Thank you, man. It's just a matter of he was your first Baker. guest. <laughs> That's why he's my favorite. <laughs> Baker, third year, third year with a new freaking system. He has no preseason, all the COVID bullshit, and we act shocked that it took the guy like a month and a half to get going. And the offense was humming, except when they played the Ravens and Steelers. We act like the Browns were just some like awful team. They went thirty per game, except for those two duds, and which were not Beckham's fault. So, yeah, man, it's. I'm expecting him to like bounce back big time. The fact we don't have to even like use like this hard pick on him. We see it with Joe Mixon. We see it with all these guys that have just gotten hurt last year. Like people are just afraid to buy back in because they got hurt last year. Don't be that guy. We are talking to pro football focus lead fantasy analyst and podcast host Ian Hardis. Now, um, Ian, we, we, we talked about Odell Beckham. We're talking about the Browns. When you look at that division right now with the Browns, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Cincinnati, uh, they've gotten a lot better. Uh, you, you listen and read some things Joe Burrow has po- posted up that he has the three top best wide receiver trio in the NFL. When you look at that division, I think it's still a very tough division. I don't think Pittsburgh is as strong as they have been over the last, I would say, 15 years, with even with Ben Roethlisberger there. Uh, do you see the Browns really taking over that division with all the acquisitions they've made? Obviously, they have the most talent. Do you see them as the top team in that division right now? The Brownies, yes, sir. I actually put a little bit of dough, one unit on their uh, Super Bowl odds not that long ago. I think Baker Mayfield up plus 3,500 is a reasonable uh, value as well for MVP. Like, yes. The only thing missing from this offense last year was the presence of a just legit stud wide receiver who can get open even when everyone knows that the ball's going his way. Well, good. We're getting back OBJ. And hey, man, I mean, year two, Donovan Peoples Jones is sure looking pretty damn good in his own right. We'll see. Jarvis Landry last year, like it was almost surprising he played at the beginning because he had like a later offseason hip uh, surgery. He ended up coming on strong, so we can have a bounce back from him. I mean, the receivers are great. The tight ends are three deep. They have the best running back room in the NFL, and they have PFF's number one offensive line. The offense is there, and it was pretty much there last year. It's just the defense, and my goodness, man, you talk about, I mean, uh, what's the, uh, I'm not a huge basketball guy. Who is the, um, oh, Schroeder, uh, Dennis Schroeder. He had like 70, 80. 
had that 70, $80 million deal on the table. And now he's getting like the 8 million exemption from the Boston Celtics. Like same thing happened with Jadavian Clowney, where he had this massive contract offer from the Browns a few years ago. And now they got him for like pen- pennies relative to what they were giving him before. So even if Clowney isn't, you know, the game record, you would hope he would have been like one of the most hype recruits in my memory he's still someone that they're gonna have to respect on the line like he's a hell of an upgrade over uh you know olivia vernon who was out there last year so you add that i know greedy williams is already a little bit banged up but we've at least upgraded the backup cornerbacks a little bit more denzel ward's one of the better number ones in the league even if travis kelsey got the best of them on that one route we all saw and man if we can just get miles garrett with no covid fully go for a year <laughs> it's tough to ever bet against aaron donald and the defensive mvp i get it but man Miles Garrett, man, I feel like he's capable of one of these 20 sack seasons where everyone's just like, my goodness. He said it himself. He says he's the best edge defender, uh, you know, in the NFL. And I'm not really inclined to disagree with him. By the way, speaking of the AFC North, I, I did. I do want to mention Ian actually came in on our stream yard with a, a, his mantra, free Auden Tate, which I thought was very funny. And it's on your Twitter, too. My friend who's a Bengals fan was a huge fan of that. And I actually agree with you to an extent. I'm surprised he's getting, I mean, I guess, uh, overlapped by these other receivers. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, my, my question is mainly with the quarterback stuff because it's so deep now. Uh, we're, we've seen over the years fantasy fantasy people say, all right, wait on the quarterback, but now even more prevalent than ever. So, again, what are – what is the earliest you would ever take a quarterback and who would it be in that case in terms of value? And how many quarterbacks in the league right now that are starting do you think are draft worthy in terms of even just late in the draft that you think could be very good? That is the wild thing. I was looking at it, um, the fancy points per game. And like 17 and a half is a pretty good number historically. It's at least decent. I'm like there's 22 or 23 quarterbacks I hit that mark last year. So that was, you know, including guys that we played a handful of games, but either way, like it's just clear today's NFL higher scoring and we're seeing uh, better quarterbacks because of that in fantasy, particularly with the rise of all these dual threats that, you know, we're asked to go play wide receiver, you know, 30 years ago, pretty much. So that's really the big cheat code uh, in this game. It's players that have those multiple means of getting production, rushing quarterbacks and receiving running backs. Every now and then you get your Robert Woods, uh, Curtis Samuels of the world, the rushing wide receiver, but the quarterbacks and RBs are the main ones. It just depends on the round, man. Like usually I am waiting until the second, third tier of quarterbacks for single quarterback leagues. If we're going super flex, two QB, then you got to get on the horse a lot quicker. With that said, I mean, I did take Patrick Mahomes like in round four, I think in this certain league when I already had a Kelsey or Tyree kill early on, I've taken Lamar Jackson um, at a similar point. I mean, if the guy falls to a decent level, I'm okay with it. It's just, you know, not a position I'm going to reach on. Or once I see people start drafting them, like uh, stray away from my strategy too much to do. So one guy I keep finding myself getting more and more, which is nice is Jalen Hurts, who Mm. earlier this off season Hurts was like, it was funny. Like not many people I get it are playing fantasy football in April, but there'd be the occasional tweet. Like who's your favorite late round quarterback this year. And people would say Jalen Hurts. And it was almost funny because like for the sharp best ball, players going on which those are the only freaking people playing uh in april as it is like he was already going as the qb7 qb8 so it was like oh your late round quarterback is already going in the top six seven rounds anyway so now though for whatever reason he's been falling a little bit he's now pretty much available in round 10 or 11 so i would say i'm trying to get my first quarterback if i'm even drafting to in rounds seven or ten the one strategy though guys i've really been loving this year if you really want to go later Trey Lance or Justin Fields, Mm -hmm. both, we all see the upside, dual Mm -hmm. threat, you know, both got cameras for an arm and all that. Get them and then get Kirk Cousins with your last pick. Guys, the Vikings early schedule, we get seven weeks of Kirk Cousins against the Bengals, the Cardinals, the Seahawks, the Browns, the Lions, the Panthers, and the Cowboys. Like only Aaron Rodgers had more games with at least three touchdowns than Kirk Cousins last year. I know the dudes, you know, a lot of people probably aren't the biggest fan. The way he's handled himself this offseason and all that. If you're just worried about fantasy points, I think Kirk Cousins can really be a great streamer for you while Lance or Fields fights for that job. I just had a league this weekend, which I did Tannehill of Fields. That was the combo. And that works. Yeah. Before- I, I mean, yeah, I, I do that. I'm saying if Fields is like your first quarterback and you don't have a top 10 dude, Tannehill gotcha. will do it. So. Gotcha. 
Ian, before we let you go, because we have another guest, um, one more question. Is, is there a particular team this year that stands out from all the rest? I mean, obviously, Arizona, with the acquisitions they've made, with the draft stock they've added to that team. Uh, there, We were just talking about the Browns. Uh, some people even think Oakland could be a team to beat right now in their division. With all, Obviously, defensively, they're a little weak. But all around, they're, they're going to be a fun team to watch uh, with John Gruden over there. Is there a team that stands out to you? you out from all the rest so i like the cardinals call one cool trend i've noticed so we had the 2018 browns 2019 cardinals 2020 Bengals. all had the first overall pick baker kyler burrow first year see some flashes second year they add the alpha receiver obj hopkins jamar chase what happened to the second year browns and second year cardinals okay we got hyped about the quarterback and the wide receiver they were good, not great. Defense and offensive line holes ultimately, you know, kind of submarine the team. Now, in the post-hype year three, we saw what the Browns did with it last year. I do think the Cardinals helped sure up some of those holes they had. I mean, adding J.J. Watt and getting a healthy Chandler Jones back is absolutely huge in that defensive line. Their cornerback room looks very rough, but you know what? If you can get pressure on the quarterback in two seconds every play, I mean, that's the easiest way to make <laughs> a bad cornerback look good. So I love that call on the Cardinals being kind of a sneaky team to maybe go seize a fairly wide open. It's loaded, but a fairly wide open NFC West. With that said, guys, I just don't know how you can pick against probably the Buccaneers at this point. Like for them Again? to do what they did last year. I know it's not sexy, but it's like, damn, they bring back every single starter. They got deeper at wide receiver. They got Giovanni Bernard to give Brady his, you know, tamp his uh, you know, James White South. Like this team is just completely loaded again from top to bottom. And I picked the Chiefs against the Buccaneers. I thought Mahomes would overcome it. And I think he, you know, maybe could and try to, but it's just like I know it's not sexy to predict a rematch with it, but I look across the the leagues and I, I think there's a better chance of the Browns or the Bills beating the Chiefs than I do any team in the NFC beating the Buccaneers.